Pokemon Gold version. Cool designs, new typings, home to series favorites, and we aren't gonna use any of them. Today, I'm gonna assemble the underdogs and outcasts to see if we can beat this monster of a game. We start with a Bonsly. Why Bonsly? Well, in my vast amount of research, for being one of the Pokemon's first real gimmicks. In addition, it blocks a route in an inconvenient way. Like, why can't I just use Water Gun? In the original games, he doesn't even have an evolution, and compared to the other Rock types, it just underperforms. We're gonna use him with a final move set of Strength, Hammer Arm, Rock Throw, and Earthquake, but we aren't gonna get there for quite a while. Now, some of you might think that it'll be easy to win against Faulkner and Bugsy with this, and spoiler alert, you're right. But until I get there, I have to deal with the fact that Bonsly starts out with Fake Tears and Copycat as its only move. At level 6 we get Flail, which was an absolute godsend. We flail against our opponent, which works. We then steal his wallet and get accused by the worst police ever. This was Pokemon's chance to insert Jenny that they just completely missed. I then go to Sprout Tower, you know, the place filled with Grass-type Pokemon which hurt and Ghost-type Pokemon which we can't hit. We finally face our rival and he complains about people not being tough then conveniently escapes. We fight Faulkner and I thought this was gonna be way easier, but I barely scrape by. Bonsley evolves into Sudowoodo, and we head down to Slowpoke Well, where Kurt fakes an obvious injury. We beat Proton without much hassle, and then Kurt miraculously heals. Bugsy shows us the power of Kanto Bug Pokemon, and then we fight our rival. We get decently lucky with a crit, and our rival goes down. I need to catch an axe because Sudowoodo can block paths, but not clear them. I pick up a girlfriend on my way to Goldenrod City, and then I face Whitney, who used to be a bigger issue, but because I picked up Low Kick and got a lucky crit on Miltank is not much of an issue. She cries about it, so I bottle those tears up and use it to spray this other fake tree and get him out of my way. I then catch a sun current in the national park, as sun flora is not well liked for its capability, design, but most of all for its terrible evolution method. You have to get a sunstone, which can only be won through winning the bug catching contest. And you can only win that on Tuesdays, Thursdays, or Saturdays in real life. Who has the time for that? I mean, I guess I do, but still. Sun flora is gonna know Mega Drain, Cut, Petal Dance, and Leech Seed. I face my rival in a burnt down tower who ruins me because he knows grass type moves and curse. Eventually, through the magic power of over leveling, I'm able to finally win, but it took me maybe an hour, hour and a half just on this fight alone. I catch my next Pokemon. Use your imaginations a bit because we're catching Whitney's Milk Tank, you know, the actual hated one, but we're gonna teach it some new moves with Rollout, Surf, Milk Drink, and Body Slam. And of course, it will be completely useless in the fight against ghost type user Morty. Thankfully, we learn Faint Attack with Sudowoodo as we need to, because our other Pokemon is Grass against Morty's Poison-type team and Normal, who can't hit him at all. We teach our cow how to surf and mosey on over to Chuck, who, through Leech Seed, manages to go down pretty quickly. We pick up some medicine from obviously not a weed dealer for a Pokemon that Jasmine doesn't even own. Why are no gym leaders in their gym in this game? Just use a light bulb for the lighthouse. Pokemon don't need to be used for everything. I go back to the bug catching contest and try to win myself a sunstone, but because bug catcher Ed is a giant chotch, I have to find myself a flux capacitor, myself a pincer, and finally win the thing. And with that, we can finally evolve our sunkern into sunflora. Blog posts have been written and videos produced showcasing how much this Pokemon absolutely sucks. So of course we have to catch it. It's unknown. Unknown had so much potential and it lived up to absolutely none of it. We're gonna catch an S because, you know, what kind of moveset is it gonna know? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, that's right, it can only learn hidden power. Thankfully, ours has hidden power. Water, which is gonna be sort of useful later on. But until then... I think I need to start over. This thing doesn't look natural. I also completely legitimately and without cheating hatch my why not from the Togepi egg. Wobbuffet's on the team not because of how annoying in the anime it was, but because it's a run ruiner. If you've ever played an Iron Mon or a Nuzlocke, then you know to avoid these things at all costs. Its entire moveset is built around punishing you for being strong, and we're going to use that cheese a thousand percent. Ours is gonna know Counter, Mirror Move, Destiny Bond, and Safeguard. I work up the courage to fight Jasmine, the Steel Titan, who gave me a lot of trouble as a kid, and even as an adult, her Steelix is an absolute monster who needs to be critted and paralyzed before it can actually take it out. Her Magnemites don't pose too much of a challenge though, and we walk away with our mineral badge. 
I walk my way up north to get taken advantage of by Team Rocket before fighting an angry red Gyarados and then taking it out. We get introduced to Lance and then I'm pretty sure I watch him commit actual murder. I walk through the dumbest Team Rocket hideout of all time, go through the second bird chase of the game, which isn't a lot, but weird that it happened twice. We double battle against Ariana and this rando, and then we catch some electrodes while Lance is busy committing electro genocide. Are we sure he's the good guy? We begin our fight against Price, the ice user, and I thought this was gonna be easy because his Pokemon have glaring weaknesses to grass, but he's just better than I am. He knocks out my mill tank, and I have to rely on Sudowoodo once again, even though he's got glaring weaknesses to ice type moves and ground type moves, which kind of is an issue. Thankfully, low kick is enough to help us out here, and we get our glacier badge. This is the last time that we're gonna be over leveled for a gym battle because I don't just wanna steamroll the entire competition, I wanna showcase every Pokemon's moves and abilities. We get our last Pokemon in Smeargly. The reason that he's on the team is because he's also underutilized. Now, he's got this interesting mechanic called Sketch, which can help you learn any move in the game and have it permanently. The downfall is that Smeargly has no stats to back up any of those moves. We're gonna have to get pretty creative with his move pool, so for now, that's gonna have to remain a secret. We then get some cool new clothes at the underground fashion mall, and then get our cover immediately blown by our rival, who's a kind of a chotch. We then blow Petrol's cover and run through his infamously self-destructing team of coughings with pretty much just Rock Slide. We then squeeze him for information, which he kind of freely gives to us, and then we go underground to find, oh, look at that, the guy that ratted us out. Our rival's team is getting trickier to face, but because Miltank knows rollout, we're gonna get past his Golbat and Meganium with little problem. We're gonna hard counter his Sneasel's faint attack with, uh, with counter. And then we're gonna leech seed his Haunter and faint attack it, putting it back into its grave. Magnemite is more annoying than it is strong. With Sonic Boom for constant damage, its ability to confuse and paralyze its foe, it's just a hassle, but we win anyway, cause we're cool. Our rival then has an existential crisis on why in the world he can't beat us. It's because we're better, duh. And then we fight the rest of Team Rocket and Ariana, who goes down without too many problems, and Archer, who puts a lot harder of a fight up than I thought he was going to. Turns out that we have a glaring weakness to dark type attacks right now. Houndour absolutely annihilates our Wobbuffet and our Unknown. Luckily we know a fighting type move, but we still almost get taken out by an unlucky crit from Houndoom. So we crit him right back, and then Rock Slide is last coughing. The director comes back, hopefully to apologize for being such a coward. We walk through the ice cave and then get to Claire. Now, I thought Claire was going to be much more of a challenge, especially with how much trouble she gave me in the original games with her seemingly unlimited critical attack Kingdra. Luckily, we paralyze it, and then it doesn't shed its skin, and even manage to get our own crit in Mega Drain. In fact, Sunfloor is kind of the unsung hero of this because he's got enough special defense to tank a fire blast from a Dragonair. She even lives long enough to pop a leech seed on said Dragonair, and we're able to bring in our mill tank with relatively few issues. We do, of course, get paralyzed, but we break through it to surf it, and then we body slam. Turns out mill tank has monstrous attack, and we beat the final gym of this region, earning our. Oh wait, yeah, that's right. She doesn't give us a badge. So then I have to go talk to this hermit who makes me take this quiz that I pass flawlessly and without needing to repeat any of the questions. Eventually, Claire comes up and is jealous that I did better than her, so he has to threaten her with the homicidal maniac Lance before she'll give me a badge. It's time for Smurgly to learn Fly, which you have to set up with a double battle and then hope that you don't miss and that they don't protect and that you're able to actually sketch it, or you'll have to wait another 11 levels to sketch it. Luckily, for one turn moves like Waterfall, you can just find another Smurgly and use it there. I claw my way through Victory Road battling tough trainer after tough trainer, but luckily there's a Pokemon Center Oh wait, that's right. Our rival waits at the end of Victory Road for us, and I completely forgot about that. You know, Blue gets a lot of hate in the first games for being kind of a jerk, but Silver really takes the cake. He waited until I was pretty much done with all of my moves. I got poisoned, I got burned, I got everything under the sun, so yeah. 
I lost when it came to this battle. But because I'm petty, I use one max repel to get back to where I was, and then set myself the personal goal of destroying his entire team with just one of my Pokemon. And Miltank delivers. With critical hit after critical hit, and a stab body slam, she steamrolls his entire team. And I hope he thinks about this at night. And now it's time to go for the Elite Four for the first time in this game. As with previous runs, I don't get through these on my first attempt. This is the culmination of lots of hours of trying and failing. So I'll put a kill count up here that's not an individual kill count, but a team kill count to show you just how long it takes to get through this version of the Elite Four. With Will, Wobbuffet is an absolute G who takes his team down with Counter and Destiny Bond. Koga has never felt like a real opponent to me, he's always been there just to be annoying. He has the ability to poison and slow me down, that combined with his insane evasiveness tactics have always made him a headache, but because I'm using Whitney's mill tank, she doesn't miss rollout and I tank his entire team with one move. Bruno is much harder in this game in my opinion than his Kanto counterpart. We do some chip damage with Smurgly and then we sick the normal type Pokemon against him who does pretty well, especially if I can get a critical hit. I end up needing to switch to Wobbuffet, the Psychic type, so that he can take some fighting type moves. I keep him in to deal with the Onyx that comes out so that I can use Counter, and then I need to switch to my Pseudo Wudo who can take a hit and get his Hitmonchan out of there with an Earthquake. Karen, Karen, Karen. This fight took it out of me. It took me so many attempts because that Umbreon is an actual monster. It would just power up and then Dark Pulse my entire team into oblivion every single time. I actually had to pop a Leech Seed just to get it to eventually drain its entire health bar instead of attacking it so that I could win. And even after I got the Umbreon out of the way, she's got a team of monsters and I have a weakness to dark type attacks. And at the end, I didn't even feel dirty for needing to resort to Destiny Bond to take her Houndoom out, because that thing was also a menace. And now it's time to face Lance, who's the actual champion this time around, instead of just a tease like he was in the last game. And I've become convinced of a few things during this playthrough. First is that he's not a dragon type trainer, he is a flying type trainer. In fact, some of his Pokemon aren't even the dragon type, but all of his Pokemon are the flying type. And that helps out because Miltank knows a really, really good rock type move in rollout. So it really helps this battle move along. The other thing that I've become convinced of, and, and hear me out on this, I know I'm not MatPat, and I know that I, I don't have the qualifications to give these bold theories, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that Lance is Faulkner's dad. You see, earlier on in the game, Faulkner talks about how his dad is traveling around and that he's famous. And the only famous person that we know in this game that travels around happens to be Lance. Oh yeah, and because of our previous theory, we've worked out that he is also a flying type trainer. If this theory already exists and I'm not the original thinker of it, I'm fine with that, but I didn't look anything up, so please drop a comment to the original source. But back to the game, I sucker punches Aerodactyl who then takes me out with a crunch, and I do the age old strategy of bringing out my Wobbuffet and using counter, and that helps me clinch the victory against Lance. This woman shows up that I don't know, and we're declared the champions of Johto, which apparently doesn't matter that much, so I have to go prove myself in Kanto as well. Now, there's a lot of challenging aspects to this game, but the Kanto gym leaders are just not one of them. They're pretty easily foldable, even with this misfit group of put together Pokemon. So instead of walking through how I beat each and every one of these gym leaders, I hope you enjoy the montage of the absolute smackdown that I give them, while I talk to you about what this game kind of means to me. The original gold version released in America in late 2000, October I want to think, and it blew my mind. As a kid, I had played pretty much solo through the entirety of Red Version, and I had, I had played that game to death. I had found all the secret things you could find, I caught all the birds and Mewtwo, and even got some hacks on it for Mew. But with Gold Version, it was different. It was the first video game I remember distinctly playing around friends. We would trade tips and strategies, we talked about how to get through each and every single gym leader. This was around the same time that we were starting to look up game facts, but we'd rather just try and figure it out ourselves. At least until we got stuck and really needed the game fact. And I don't think it's just the nostalgia talking here. 
I mean, Jasmine took me forever to figure out how to get past. My buddy Brian from next door, he said that, oh, you just have to use fire type moves. Well, he had chosen Syndical and I had Totodile, so I had no easily available fire moves. Because if you didn't know, you really can't get a fire type mon until way later in the game. So then we cooked up the idea that all I needed to do to beat Jasmine was to catch an Entei. And so I tried to do exactly that. I stopped focusing on beating the game and started focusing on trying to catch the impossibly elusive Entei. In January of 2021, my mom got into a really, really bad car accident and she didn't make it out. And that was a really hard time for me. And as cheesy as it sounds, Pokemon is one of the things that helped me get through it. You know, instead of having to talk about feelings and, and what was going on in my head at the time, I could just play Pokemon with friends. We could talk about how it was stupid that I was trying to get an Entei and, and how it was so easy to get past Jasmine. And Pokemon, and as such, you know, video games in general, have the crazy awesome ability to bring people together and help us to get through hard times. And that's what I want this channel to be. A place where we can come and hang out and put together terrible Pokemon teams to take on absolute legends, gods, and monsters. But enough about me. Let's get back to see how these guys are doing against the new and improved Elite Four. Heart Gold and Soul Silver put together some new mons on these guys' teams, which actually makes them a lot cooler and a lot more challenging to face. Now, it might seem like we're severely overleveled here, but I only went off the level cap of the champion since it'd be really hard to level in between mons without the use of a lot of rare candies. We've done a fair bit of EV training also at this point, so our hidden power unknown is actually pretty useful against any rock type or even some of Bruno's mons because they're all fighting now. Wobbuffet is an absolute monster at this point. I really didn't think I would use him when we started this challenge, but because he's got such great defense and special defense, he rolls through a lot of Bruno's mods. That and my newly silk scarfed stab move body slam mill tank just absolutely destroys. In fact, I ended up going to the battle frontier and getting a couple of extra items to put on my mons. And if you let your mom steal money from you through the entire game, then on occasion she'll actually buy you some useful equipment. Karen is actually a lot easier this time for a lot of reasons. First and foremost being that we are crazy overleveled for her anyway got some moves that actually help us out. We we do end up using Destiny Bond on Umbreon though because he is still a fiend. Lance is way harder in this lineup of the Elite Four, mainly because he's starting to use Dragon type Pokemon, but also because he's matched with us in levels and he keeps on surviving on like one HP. Thankfully, he still has an over-reliance on flying type Pokemon, so we're able to abuse that with our Miltank's rollout. Wobbuffet once again comes in actual clutch territory with Mirror Move, and I use the Forbidden Destiny Bond once more. I know some of you are probably tired of me winning like this, However, one, I had to, and two, imagine Lance just being really, really frustrated that that's how it ends. Gold version does something really cool in that it lets you fight Pokemon Trainer Red. Now, before the multiverse got established and there were all sorts of characters like Ethan and Red and Blue, we didn't, we didn't know them like that. All we knew was that we were facing the challenger that we used to be. It's literally an homage to say that the Pokemon in this generation can absolutely stand against the Pokemon of the previous, and we're not stuck in or chained down by our past. I know that's probably a stretch, but still. I'm not going to talk for the rest of this, I just want to watch the team that got weirdly strung together beat this absolute tyrant of a trainer.
And there you have it. Click here if you want to see the one that I did with Generation 1.